Hello and welcome to another video tutorial. In this video, I'll be showing you how to create your very own Elite Dangerous styled 3D radar system. Now, if you don't already have a 3D radar builder or a pro radar builder, then the links in the description below so you can follow those links to the Unity Asset Store and get whichever radar builder you choose. Either the 3D radar builder or the pro radar builder will work fine. All right, so um, how we went about creating this uh, radar system is simply by opening up our Pro Radar Builder or your 3D Radar Builder by going to the Tools menu, Diamango, and opening up your either 3D Radar Builder or Pro Radar Builder, and you'll get this editor window here. Now, all you need to do is uh, click 3D and then click Create to create your 3D Radar. If you're using 3D Radar Builder, then all you need to do is simply just click the 3D button and the radar will just be created. But since we're using Pro Radar Builder and we can choose between a 2D or a 3D, first we're going to need to uh, specify whichever one we want to create first and then create it. Alright, once you've created that, then we get access to three different tabs. We get access to the Designs tab, Blips tab and the Create tab. Now, in the Designs tab, this is where we specify how we want the uh, how large the radar should be. That's the scale of the radar. If we want to use the local scale of the radar, or we want to use a uh, a different value to scale the radar, we can specify the tracking bounds, which is this area outlined in in yellow, and we can actually see the various areas because we've turned on the visualize function here. So once we turn on visualize, then we can visualize the various culling zones and bounds of the radar. There's also what's called the inner culling zone. Now anything inside of this area will be culled. So if we increase that inner culling zone, you can see that the blips are gonna start disappearing as they enter this zone. We can go ahead and leave that to zero. And um, if we're using the local scale, and this is kind of this is really cool we can actually treat the 3d radar as we would treat any game object so we can actually literally just grab the 3d radar scale it rotate it and position it however we want and we won't break the tracking that's one of the really cool things about the 3D Radar Builder. Uh, really, the 3D radars in general. Now, um, if I hadn't mentioned, there are three different radars in the scene. The right radar, middle radar, and left radar. The right radar is doing position and rotation tracking of our player ship, which we're currently inside of. The middle radar is tracking the various objects in the scene. Um, these triangles are representing some uh, life objects in the scene. These little green ones here are rep representing some target objects which should be right above us. We'll go ahead and take a look at them in a little while. And the uh, these glowing uh, blips here these are the prefab blips. So they're prefab blips, sprite blips, mesh blips, various type of blips you can use. And if you're using prefab blips, then you can literally display anything at all anything at all inside of the, the 3d radar well really because it's just prefabs all right so um it's going to jump over to the blips area here we have the middle radar selected so we're only seeing the uh, settings for the middle radar here now we're tracking life ammo targets and enemy now, let's go ahead and turn these off really quickly turn these off so we're only going to be looking at the life blips here now, as you can see, um, these blips have tracking lines on them. It's kind of hard to see. Let me just uh, increase, actually reduce this uh, scene scale, kind of zoom out. So you can see the tracking line on it. Let's go ahead and increase this again. Now, as you can see that though this one is in the radar, you don't see the tracking lines on it. And that's because this is using a special function called the always show function. So if we find a life uh, blip and we scroll down to the advanced options here, 
we can see that the always show function is turned on. Now what this means is that regardless of whether or not the blip is inside of the tracking bounds, the blip will be displayed. However, the blip will also be scaled uh, depending on its distance from the center object of the radar. Now the center object of the radar is whatever you uh, set here in this default blip section. If you have not set any, which we haven't, then the center object will be the radar itself. If you were using, let's say you were using the screen space function, then the radar would have three different center objects to choose from at runtime. So if your player was, let's say player was uh, disabled in the scene and you're using the uh, screen space function, then it would use the uh, render camera. If we're, you, as we're doing, we're not using the screen space and we don't have the player, then it's going to use radar instead. That's just how that setting works. And now, if we go ahead and go back to the designs area and we let's say we increase the zoom, so we zoom in, we can see that now that the blip is inside the tracking bounds, we can actually see those tracking lines again. If we go ahead and reduce this, we can actually see the scaling of the blips. So they scale down to prevent crowding in the radar itself. So while all of your blips are still in the radar, um, they're now scaled down so there's no crowding taking place. You can just jump back here and then turn on all of our other blips. All right, and just increase this back to about 500. So we got all the blips back into the scene. Turn on the target. Good. All right. And then we're just going to go ahead and rotate this right now. Rotate the, rotate the ship right now. So you can see that tracking happening. Now in the right radar, we're actually tracking our projectiles also. So not only are we tracking the ship, but the projectiles. So if we fire our projectiles, their position will be uh, relative to the ship. All right, and for the left radar now, as I said, we're only tracking a uh, dummy enemy object in the scene. So we can go ahead and, and work that some more to make it do some more stuff. And if I have not mentioned this before, um, these values here, just for design purposes, you could, you could actually have this uh, red sprite here rotate 360 degrees. And when it rotates, it reduces or increases this value by one or whatever you want it to do. It could do that. All right, so I'm just going to go through the uh, design process for any one of these blips. I won't have to go through the process of showing um, the blip setup for any more than one uh, radar since the blip setup is really the same. What I will show you is how we actually got this uh, mesh in here and here and how we actually set up the rotation tracking. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and turn these off. Actually, all right, yes. Now, as you can see here, our lives are in the scene. What we did, we said we want to create a, bl a blip as a sprite um, from an object with tag alive, and we want it to be on the layer default. I'm going to go ahead and exit the play mode really quickly so that I don't break anything. All right, and because it's going to be a sprite, all we do is that we find a sprite that we want to use. We can use any sprite. And then we find a material that we want to use to uh, render that sprite. We can use any material we want. We're going to go ahead and use the default sprite material. And then we can give that sprite any color we want. We're going to go ahead and use this yellow color. All right, so we've set up that blip um, look then we want to set up the tracking line. By default, your tracking line is going to say tracking line is inactive. You should just go ahead and turn on the tracking line if you want to use tracking line by clicking the power button here. Then you can open up that fold out and then you can determine how you want the tracking line to look. Now we've provided a material called a tracking line material 
again you can use whatever material you want we could have used the default sprite material we're going to use this tracking line material we're going to use this tracking line material all right just go ahead and select that again tracking line material and we can determine if we want it to have a start color or end color and the start color is going to start from the base of the radar and the end is going to end color is going to end at the uh, now the blip itself so it's going to be a gradient transition from the base of the from the radar itself to the blip all right and we can also specify our base tracker so this really um, uh, highlights where the uh, start point of the radar is on your start point of the tracking line is on your radar itself so i'm going to go ahead and just quickly run this scene here if we have this uh, blip turned on then I'll go ahead and zoom down on the uh, base tracker for the life blip. All right, so we do have it turned on. All right, good. I'm gonna just zoom down on that. I'm feeling a little bit lazy, so I'm just gonna scale it instead. Actually, don't do that. Just scale this way. All right, I'll just zoom in. So there we have that uh, base tracker right there. Let's go ahead and uh, increase that scene scale. All right, so there's our base tracker right there. And you can also just go ahead and you can uh, determine how big you want that base tracker to be. You can increase that scale if you want. Um, you do that outside of the runtime all right so what we're going to do next is that since we've already went through how to set up the sprite and the tracking lines then we're going to jump down to the additional options which we've covered it's just a single function in here which allows for you to have the uh, blip always be displayed in the radar there's also another function here i'm going to run the scene again and i'm going to go into the rotation and scale settings and i'm going to change a couple of values at runtime I'll show you and show you what happens when we do that all right so in the rotation and scale we've set the scale of the blip to 0.2 we could just change that if we wanted or we could go ahead and use the scale by distance function here and what this means is that there's going to be a minimum scale value which could be 0 0.1 0 0.1 being a minimum scale and a maximum scale being 0 0.2 now, um, when that radar actually passes the tracking bounds, it won't be scaled down below 0.1. Or if you want that radar to, want that blip to always be at 0.2, then when you're actually uh, scaling, the blip won't actually shrink down anymore. So you can do that if you want that blip to always have the same scale just going to go ahead and use that uh, um, default value here of, what was it, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, yeah. All right, so that covers the rotation, uh, the uh, scale by distance function on the rotation scale. Track rotation um, allows for you to track the rotation of the object in the scene and pass that rotation onto your blip. However, for sprite blips, we usually don't want to do this as if your blip, because we don't actually know the rotation of the object that we're tracking, if the blip rotates at an angle that's going to be, that's going to make it hard for us to see the blip, then we're not going to want that. So we're not going to want to use track rotation if we're using blips. But if we have a good understanding of what that rotation will be, then we can go ahead and use it. Then we have some options of freezing the X, Y, or Z rotations of that blip. Now we've covered the rotation scale. We've covered the additional options, which is the always show and uh, tracking lines. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit about the prefab blips. So really all you do is just add your prefab blips to this and your blip will be a prefab instead of a sprite. But once you do that, you also have to tell it to create the blip as a prefab mesh or, or sprite. 
currently we're set to sprite now on the mesh area you can uh, actually have that blip be a mesh and you can have that mesh exist at uh, different LODs based on the distance of the blip from the center object itself now you can set your low resolution mesh and the distance at which is going to be ra rendered your medium resolution mesh and its distance the high resolution mesh and its distance and you can turn on the LODs by flipping this, uh, clicking this button here to turn on the LODs. We're going to leave this off since we're not using meshes. And you can also uh, set the number of materials that that particular object is going to be using. So if you're using a object that uses multiple materials, then you just specify the number of materials that it uses, hit enter. Then you just go ahead and select those materials and then they'll automatically be assigned to the... Uh, to the mesh all right so that process there is the same for all other blips and it's also the same for the center object blip here I already talked about the different center objects that can exist and when they come into play so that's really all that there is to setting up your 3d radar system here but I'm just going to jump to the right radar. And since it's this almost the same as the left radar, I'm just going to focus on the right radar. So it's going to go to the right radar now. And as you can see here, we're not using the uh, uh, center object here again. So our center object is going to be the radar itself. And also the uh, player is going to actually have its own blip in that radar itself usually the player would be the uh, center object but it's not we don't actually have that center object instead the radar will be the center object and we do this because we want um, the tracking to be uh, tracking of the projectiles themselves to be really accurate now i'm going to run the scene and show you exactly why i did this and you're going to want to do this too if you're going to want to do uh, uh, particle simulation for like collisions so if our spaceship was to be shot right in, at the front here, then we'd also want to see a particle effect go off on the ship right here. Now, the best way to accomplish this is to make your uh, player object, since there'd usually only be one, uh, be represented as a blip. And just give it a, a nice scale. And... Uh, this one uses mesh blip, you give it a nice scale, give it uh, the materials that it needs. Um, we're not using LODs on this one. Then after you've done that, then what happens is that the uh, position of the ship uh, will be uh, relative to the radar divided by its scene scale. And so too will the projectiles, so that when they're fired, so we're going to go ahead and fire these now so that when they're fired the fire from the relative relatively uh, same position or the same exact position as they are fired from the ship itself now we could just go ahead we want this if we wanted this to be uh, much more accurate let's go ahead and uh, zoom out here I'm gonna fire my projectiles again so these were a little bit uh, further is around the front so actually just increased the scale on my ship here just because I wanted to see more of the ship inside of the radar itself so we can see that uh, the projectile firing is a little close into the into the ship so we can go ahead and just scroll down to the rotation and scale and reduce that scale some more so let's go ahead and point one one yeah, and, and that'd be a little bit better but we actually do want the um, this to be a little bit larger so I'll just leave it as is all right I'm gonna head back over to our middle radar now and as I said I'm gonna go ahead and fly around in the scene a little bit and uh, 
move around with the tracking with the objects being tracked all right time to do a little flying all right so here we go all right All right, so there are a couple of things that are going to be changed with this radar. So we're going to be uh, adding some extra functions to the radar itself so that you can actually have some limits on the rotation of your of your blips. Because uh, for this particular example, we don't want this ship to be uh, rotating um, 360 degrees. We want to limit that to about 60 degrees and that's actually quite simply implemented. So I'm going to add that to it so that we can have that function. But that's really all that there is to uh, creating radar systems like these. So once again, uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. And if you have an idea for, um, if you have any ideas or suggestions, then you can uh, either send us an email or uh, leave a comment in, and I'll check those out. Um, if there's a particular type of radar system which you want to uh, see created, then we can do that also. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.